Welcome to MEM18011, Shut Down and Isolate Machines and Equipment. Welcome to Pertech Learn and Developments. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. Isolating equipment and machinery in the workplace is important. This is to make sure that it is not operated or turned on accidentally during maintenance or decommissioning. Imagine someone cranking the engine over in your car while you're trying to change the fan belt. Or you're changing the blade on your lawnmower and that accidentally starts. In the case of the car, I'd remove the keys from the ignition and put them in my pocket. In the case of the lawnmower, I'd remove the spark plug lead purge the system of fuel and make sure it was in the off position. Machinery and plant isolation is sometimes referred to as lotto. Lock out, tag out. What will we be learning today? Today we'll be looking at the terminology, steps and equipment commonly used for locking out and tagging out equipment and machinery. What are we actually locking out? Firstly, let's look at primary energy sources. Electric, as an example. Chemical, could be petrol or diesel or steam. Let's look at this compressor, for example. Does unplugging it from the power point mean that it's now energy free? No. Could there be other types of energy involved, stored or residual energy? Let's have a look. Removing a hose or a gauge could cause a violent release of energy. In this case, compressed air stored in the tank. Stored or residual energy can be deadly and must be a standard consideration when locking out and de-energizing machinery or pieces of equipment. Sources of stored or residual energy may include batteries or capacitors, steam, pressure vessels, boilers. What about thermal residual energy? Is the boiler still too hot? Or can the heat in the boiler create residual energy, even though it's turned off? Gravitational. What happens when I disconnect a hydraulic hose on a backhoe? What if the bucket's in the raised position? Will gravity cause the bucket to fall once I remove the hydraulic hose or release the hydraulic fluid? Kinetic residual energy. Is the flywheel still rotating after I turn and isolate the primary power source? Pressure. We've already had a look at uh, an example, which is, was our compressor or air compressor. Chemical. Again, we already looked at my lawnmower. Make sure that the primary fuel source, which is the two stroke, is cut off. And I also made sure that the primary source of power for the spark plug, which was the lead, was also removed. You wouldn't clean or service a loaded nail gun, for example. First, you'd remove the energy source, the battery, the cylinder. Then you'd remove the nails. What's going on here? What was the purpose of leaving the key in the lock? Is this sending mixed messages? In this case, there's no message. The tag is blank. No contact name, number or reason for the lock being there. Before we start looking at uh, locking out and tagging out procedures in detail, keep in mind that our procedures need to be created to an agreed upon standard. Any SOPs, which are standard operating procedures, must be created and referenced to this standard. Good reference materials are important. A copy of the Australian standard ASNZ4024 is invaluable when creating isolation procedures.
Let's get started with our favorite formula, competence. Competence is made up of 70% knowledge, 30% perseverance, and 10% talent. Will repeating the same process over and over eventually give you a different result? Of course not. Without knowledge, perseverance is just wasted talent. As engineers, reference materials, charts, specifications, catalogues are critical to getting the job done efficiently. Portable electronic devices make it even easier than ever to have information available at your fingertips. A good reference book, a textbook, by the way, are also great resources. Check your student portal for additional references and resources. Knowledge is power. The machineries and hydraulics handbooks are also an invaluable resource. It's impossible to remember everything. It's a lot easier to remember where everything is. Let's warm up with this interesting video from uh, TAFE, Queensland. A 42 year old worker's arm was crushed by a wool pulling machine he was cleaning. The main operating switch of the machine was off, but an isolation switch installed on the electrical supply had been left on. Another worker accidentally struck the foot pedal with a broom when sweeping. This activated the machine and the rollers crushed his arm, causing severe lacerations, degloving and fractures. Make sure this doesn't happen at your workplace by ensuring machines are shut down and isolated when they're not in production or when they're being repaired, maintained or cleaned. Isolation means that energy cannot enter the machine and stored energy cannot be released, so there's no way it can start up accidentally. The most effective way to isolate machines is to lock them out. First, shut it down and turn off the power at its source. Prevent the power being turned back on by locking the switch or lever in the off position. It should only be possible for the lock to be removed by the person who attached it. Lock any other controls that could also activate or energise the machine. De-energise any stored energy which could also activate the machine. Air or hydraulic energy may be stored in the machine after the electricity has been turned off. This could involve lowering elevated equipment or releasing air or hydraulic pressure. Once a machine is isolated, follow a tag out process to warn others that the machine is not safe to use. Danger lockout tags are used once energy sources and isolation points have been locked out when someone is working on a machine and would be at serious risk if it was turned on or operated. Out of service tags are placed on a machinery to indicate that it is faulty or damaged. Tags should identify the person who locked out the machine, the date and time and the reason for isolation. If the isolation process involves a number of people, each person must attach their own danger lockout tag to their individual padlock and lock their padlock on a hasp in a lockbox. Each person's name and relevant details must be recorded on the isolation register. Finally, test that the machine has been isolated by attempting to reactivate it without putting yourself or others in danger. Training your workers and contractors in isolating machinery should be a priority. Remember, shut down the machine, isolate energy sources, tag the machine, and inform someone that the machine is not in production. For more information, visit worksafe.qld.gov.au or call 1300 369 915. Work safe, home safe. Let's perform an isolation procedure on this three-phase compressor. Before we start, let's have a look at some basic concepts. All potentially hazardous energy sources shall be isolated before commencing work. The personal lock is to remain in place while a person is performing work on an isolated piece of equipment. Only competent and authorised personnel shall perform 
isolations and de-isolations. Personal locks shall only be removed by their owner. The scenario. A cylinder head gasket and pressure switch on the compressor will need replacing. A fitter and an electrician will be required for this job. The fitter is in charge and the electrician is a contractor. Six main steps to safely isolate a machine. Step one, prepare for shutdown. Is there a service or instruction manual for this piece of equipment? Have I identified and spoken to the person who usually operates or maintains the equipment? Is there an SOP, standard operating procedure? Do I have to create a standard operating procedure? Have I done a risk assessment before I start any work? Do I need any permits? Will anybody be affected by the shutdown? Do I have to advise anybody beforehand? Zero gravity state. Some machines will have a parking position or you may have to lower and secure components which may be affected by gravity once you de-energize the system. The bucket of our bulldozer is lowered prior to de-energizing. The bender's blade is lowered to stop it from free falling after de-energizing. A protective piece of timber prevents the blade from getting damaged. You may require assistance from the regular operators of these machines. Remember, if in doubt, ask. Now step two, follow the shutdown procedure. Turn off the compressor at the control panel, then press the emergency stop button. As per the compressor instruction manual and as advised by the operator. Don't forget to notify everybody involved and anyone that could be indirectly affected by this isolation procedure. Step three, isolate the equipment from the energy source. This compressor is hardwired to the distribution board. There is a main isolation switch near the compressor and there is a three phase circuit breaker switch on the distribution board. Here's what they look like. The isolation switch near the compressor and the three phase circuit breaker located inside the distribution box. Step four, locks and tags. We now need to mechanically lock the switches to prevent accidental or unauthorized operation. We will also need to attach tags to the equipment and isolation points. Information on the tags should include the date, who isolated it, and how can they be contacted, why it was isolated, and any other relevant information for stakeholders. And also, is there an isolation register that I need to complete? In our example, there's an isolation switch between the compressor and the distribution board. Two personal locks will be required in our case one from the fitter and one from the electrician. A lockout record sheet will also need to be completed to keep record of who has the keys and how can they be contacted. If we did not have an isolation point in between the compressor and the distribution board, an appropriate lock should be fitted to the circuit breaker after it's placed in the off position. Multi-lock clamp and individual padlocks should be still used on circuit breaker isolation points when there are multiple persons working on the equipment. It may not be practicable to lock the whole distribution cabinet as you may need access to other circuit breakers in there. A do not operate tag should be fitted to any mechanical lockout device with the name of the person in charge, in our case it's the fitter, the date and any other relevant information. In our case, the person who tagged the machine is Peter Abdo. It's the hose assembly department. Repairs expected to be finished on the 7th of the 7th, 2021. It's being serviced. 
For any inquiries, contact 0411 An out of service tag indicates that the whole machine is unavailable or being decommissioned. If there's any danger or risk associated with the machine being operated or turned on, it should be isolated from its energy source and fitted with a do not operate tag at the isolation point. Release or purge any stored or residual energy. As we can see from the gauge on the compressor storage tank, there's still a considerable amount of stored energy in the tank, in our case, compressed air. Open the service or bleeder valve to release the stored air. Check with the service manual or the operator if you're not sure how to do this. This should also be detailed in your SOP if you're creating one. Although the storage tank is energy free, there could still be residual energy in the lines due to accumulators and one-way valves. Check all the associated circuits to make sure the whole system's at zero energy state. Some machines and equipment can be complex and difficult to operate and requires specialized knowledge. Research and understand the shutdown process before commencing any work on machinery or equipment. The incorrect shutdown procedure could cause serious damage or even injury or death. Remember one of the golden rules. If in doubt, ask. Sometimes machinery and equipment employ electrical energy storage devices like capacitors, batteries, etc. Even though the device is isolated from the electrical supply, electrical energy can still be released under certain circumstances. This energy may have to be released or isolated before work can commence. Check with the service manual or your electrician. Always remember, if in doubt, ask. Be aware, the equipment may be incorrectly wired or labelled. A quick test with a multimeter or a voltage detector is a good way to confirm that the electrical supply is isolated. I personally always double check with two meters. I have a multimeter and a voltage detector. A clamp meter can be used for double checking if you don't have a voltage detector. If you're not familiar with using these devices, get a qualified person to assist you. The last step in our isolation is we make sure that the machine doesn't turn on or operate. Make sure the machine and the area is clear before testing. Let's take a quick look at some of the lockout devices available to us. Here we have a standard electrical lockout kit. It has all the tags, locks and devices commonly used for electrical isolation. Not all machines and devices are hardwired. Pictured here is a lockout device placed over the plug. There are a large number of lockout devices commercially available to cover vast array of applications. Things like gas, steam, water, etc. That doesn't mean if there's no commercially available lockout devices at your premises that you don't use one. We're going to have to think safety and improvise. Will a regular padlock fit on the isolator? Can we use a couple of cable ties? Can we remove the fuse at the distribution board? And of course, we can make our own labels. Step one, preparing to re-energize. Do I need to warn or notify anyone that I'm re-energizing the equipment? Will this action affect anyone or put somebody in danger or cause damage to something? Step two, clearing the area of equipment and tools. Am I leaving the area as I found it? Am I leaving any equipment behind or anything that could cause a hazard to somebody? Step three, have all the lock owners removed their locks? Has everyone that added a lock to the isolation point finished and removed their locks? Have I checked the isolation register? What does that say? 
If all locks are removed and I'm clear to proceed, I will remove any remaining lockout devices that were fitted by me. Step five, paperwork. Have I updated the isolation register? Good time to destroy any tags or erase any information on reusable tags. Final step, clear the area and notify anybody around that you're going to be starting up the system. Check the system for the correct operation. You might require the regular operator's assistance for this part. Tenants for getting the job done. In this unit, we've introduced the first of our tenants for getting the job done. The first one is, if in doubt, ask. What does this mean? No one can know everything. Ask a question, communicate with the experts. The fact that you're asking questions actually shows that you know what you're doing. 